budget process. The budget process begins with the president's submission to Congress of a budget on or before the first Monday in February. The president's budget compiled from input by various federal agencies is a detailed outline of the administration's policy and funding priorities and a presentation of the coming year's economic outlook. <clears throat> the House and Senate then work out that year's congressional budget resolution, a blueprint for the budget activities in the coming fiscal year and at least five years into the future. The resolution, which must be ready by April 15, does not require a presidential signature but must be agreed to by the House and Senate before the legislative processing of the budget begins. Superscript 2, which reads, for uh, more details on the budget process, see Martha Colvin and Richard Colgan introduction to the federal budget process. Central on budget and policy priorities. Back to the text. I will likely omit the uh, the notes. Back to the text. The budget process distinguishes between two types of federal spending: entitlement spending, refers to funds for programs for which. Uh, funding levels are automatically set by the rules set by Congress and by a number of eligible recipients. The most important federal entitlement program are Social Security, which provides income support to the el elderly, and Medicare, which provides health insurance to the el elderly. Each person eligible uh, for benefits through entitlement programs receives them unless Congress changes the eligibility criteria. For example, all citizens and permanent residents of the United States age 65 and over who have worked for at least 10 years are eligible for coverage of their hospital expenditures under the Medicare program. Discretionary spending refers to spending set by annual appropriation levels that are determined by Congress, such as spending on highways or national defense. This spending is optional in contrast to entitlement programs for which funding is mandatory. Congress's budget resolution includes levels of discretionary spending projections about the deficit and instructions for changing entitlement programs and tax policy. The House and Senate Appropriations Committees each take the total amount of discretionary spending available according to the budget resolution and divide it into 13 sub-allocations for each other's 13 subcommittees. The subcommittees each develop a spending bill for their areas of government working off, the, working off of the President's budget the previous year's spending bills and new priorities they wish to incorporate. The 13 bills must eventually be approved by the full Appropriations Committee. Differences between the House and Senate versions are worked out in conference and each of the 13 Appropriations Bills must be passed by both Houses of Congress no later than June 30. The bills are then sent to the president who may sign them, veto them, veto them, or allow them to become law without his signature after 10 days. The budget process sets discretionary spending only, not entitlement spending. If Congress, if Congress wishes to change entitlement programs, it must include in its budget resolution reconciliation instructions 
that has a direct uh, committees with the jurisdiction over entitlement and tax policies to achieve a specified level of savings as they see fit in a similar process in a process similar to the appropriations process. Reconciliation bills must be worked out within and between the House and Senate and then are submitted to the President by June 15th. The President then has the same option as described in the appropriations process. Sidebar entitlement spending mandatory funds for programs for which funding levels are automatically set by the number of eligible recipients, recipients not at the discretion of Congress. Discretionary spending optional spending set by appropriation levels each year at Congress's discretion. Application Efforts to control the deficit. The rapid rise of the deficit in the 1970s and 1980s led to a number of congressional efforts to restrain the government's ability to spend beyond its means. In late 1985, with the government running increasing federal deficits, popular and political pressure uh, pushed the Balanced Budget and Emergency Control Act, also known as the Graham Rudman Hallings Deficit Reduction Act, or GRH, uh, through big GRH, through uh, I should say that capitals GRH through Congress on uh, and on to President Reagan's desk, where he signed the bill on December 12, 1985. Uh, the Graham Rudman Hollings said. Uh, mandatory annual targets for the federal deficit starting at $180 billion in 1986 and decreasing it in $336 billion increments until the budget would be balanced in 1991. Uh, the Graham Rudman Hollings Deficit Reduction Act also in included a trigger provision that initiated automatic spending cuts once the budget deficit started missing the specified targets. In reality, the trigger was avoided by all sorts of gimmicks for which no penalties were incurred by lawmakers. For example, when it became clear that the target for 1988 would not be met, the deficit targets were reset with a new aim to hit zero deficit by 1993 instead of the original 1991. The divergence between projected deficits and actual ones grew larger and the projections thus became much less credible. The continuing failure to meet the graham rudman Holdings Deficit Reduction Act deficit targets led to the 1990 adoption of the Budget Enforcement Act capitals BEA, where uh, rather, there's nowhere, rather than trying to target a deficit level, the Budget Enforcement Act simply aimed to restrain government growth. The Budget Enforcement Act set specific caps on discretionary spending in future years that were sufficiently low that discretionary spending would have to fall over time in real terms. It also created the pay-as-you-go process, pay-go for revenues and entitlements, which prohibited any policy changes from increasing the estimated deficit in any year in the next six-year period. The current fiscal year and the five years of forecast done by the Congressional Budget Office the if deficits increase, the president must issue a sequestration requirement which reduces direct spending by a fixed percentage in order to offset the deficit increase. 